Welcome to Living in the World International Church. We are here as doers of God's Word with signs and wonders following. If you want more information about our ministry, visit us at www.litweek.org or email us at info at litweek.org. You will never be the same again. Now it's time to listen to God's Word from Pastor Femi Alaric. Be blessed as you listen. Good evening and welcome to our midweek service. It's good to be here again teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am glad when the sinners us go to the house of the Lord. This is an exciting time to be a Christian. We have been looking at the subject of faith for the month of March. And I believe faith is so paramount to anything that we shall be doing in life. Each and every one of us need faith. And we need to have our faith built up so that we can withstand a greater level of glory. No doubt God has things in store for us, good things in store for us, great things in store for us. But many of us cannot take delivery of our good things, of our goodness from the Lord because we have not developed the strength of faith to withstand that level of glory. And I'm praying that in this season that we are studying the subject of faith, that each and every one of us will receive greater insight into the subject of faith so that we can then receive from the Lord those things that we desire. A running theme for the midweek service has been building blocks of faith. Today we are looking at the subject of courage. Each and every one of us needs courage. The Lord said to Joshua in the books of Joshua chapter 1 verse 6, He says, be strong and courageous. And I believe he is saying this to each and every one of us. Because we are often faced with the unholy trinity of fear, doubt and uncertainty, which many times paralyze many of us. And stops us from achieving our aims and purpose in life. Many times situation looks overwhelming. Perhaps you are waiting for a medical report to come back from the doctors. Or you are facing the possibility of being laid off from your place of work. Wondering how you are going to pay your rent or your mortgage. Or um, feed your children. There is something that keeps coming up. One way or the other. And you see, challenges of life never come up at a good time in life. So therefore, we each and every one of us need to develop the courage that in spite of challenges that we face, we can keep pressing forward. And I'm believing that God tonight will speak to us in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you very, very much for your word that's come forth with power and life this month. We thank you for thus far you have helped us, for increasing our faith, multiplying us and enlarging our coast. My Lord and my God, as we sit at your feet to learn your word, please open our eyes of understanding. Reveal to us the building blocks of faith in courage today. To the glory and praise of your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Like I was saying, challenges of life never seems to know the right time to come up. You see, it seems like you're just on, on a good path, on a steady path. Everything seems to, be, seems to be going well and suddenly life seems to throw the, um, a spanner into your works. Challenges of life sometimes does not, is not limited to a group of people. Uh, whatever social classification or status that you belong to. Age group, gender, race, color. It does not know who you are. It simply just turns up on our ways. And therefore, we have to be able to deal with them and deal with them efficiently and effectively so that they don't stop us on our progress uh, path in life. Sometimes we feel overwhelmed because we are under so much pressure. It might be financial pressure, it might be relationship, it might be pressure at work, it might be the wife, it might be the children, it might be anything. Every one of us will go through one phase of our life where we feel things are not just going according to plan. In this situation, we need courage. And courage is something that each and every one of us must develop. It's like having a backbone strong enough to withstand any form of pressure. We are resilient in spite of adversity, despite opposition, and we are forging ahead to see our vision accomplished for the year. See, courage takes boldness to face your fears because fears paralyzes people. It stops us from ever accomplishing those things that we have. I'm not saying we should ignore our worries and our concerns and bury our head in the sand like an ostrich thinking our problems will go away. No, but face them head on. You see, I come from the school of thought that 
Many times the fears and challenges that we have stems out of ignorance because many of us have failed to get proper understanding of what we need to do. Excuse me. <coughs> and because of that, we often find ourselves in situations where we are afraid. So afraid that we don't seem to know what to do. And we feel overwhelmed. And sometimes all we have to do is speak to somebody who is more experienced than we are and they can show us the way forward. It takes courage to face your fears and your worries and those things that look like you would never come out of. Number two, God is always there by your side. Many of us think we are alone in this. Have you ever gone through something in your life you felt that you are alone? And there seems like nobody else knows what you're going through. He knows where you are. He knows what you're going through. And he has also prepared a place for you to take you to. But many of us are seem to be stuck in our own habits. And we rely on our own intelligence and understanding. The Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. With all that get and get understanding. And we know that the Lord is the source of all wisdom. We know that he's the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of counsel. So we need to understand that when we are going through challenges and we are so scared and we lack um, the courage to forge ahead, there's always somebody who's standing by us who is our ever-present help in times of need. He has said that, that he will never leave us nor forsake us. So we must understand that God is God in spite of situations in the fire is with us. The psalmist said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he said, I have no fear, for thou is with me. So don't ever think to yourself that whatever you're going through, you're going through by yourself. You have somebody there that is going with you. See what the Lord says in the books of 4 Samuel chapter 12, verse 22. For the Lord will not forsake you, his people, for his great name's sake, because it has pleased the Lord to make you his people. And because we are Christians, but if our child or our children of God, we know that he will never leave us. For no father will hear the cry of his child and ignore. God is not a wicked God. Number three is that courage takes look or requires us taking risk. Now when we talk about risk, uh, we are talking about exposure to injury or a loss of some sort and many of us have fear we don't want to lose but you see in life you have to play or pay to get uh, to to play and one of the ways you pay is by mistakes you get to play by making mistakes nobody gets on the field of life and become an expert the first day there are times that you have to make mistakes and because many of us are so afraid of making mistakes, we don't ever take the step forward. So we need the courage to take risk, to go beyond the norm, our comfort zone, so to say, and proceed ahead into places that we normally would not have ventured into because we know that God is with us. And if God be for us, then who shall be against us? Most of the times we need to do is what we need to do is to take a stock and calculate how much risk needs to be done or what is the benefit of taking that risk. If the benefit outweighs the, um, the risk by 100 to 1, then I think it is worth taking the risk. Sometimes many of us don't count the cost. We simply go by what people have said and what other people are saying and we based our final decision on that. We must take time out to research and get proper and adequate information because our courage will require us to take risk. That is the only way you can get into the promised land. Number four, courage takes resilience, enduring and never giving up. You see, resilience is the power to, or the ability to res, uh, return to the original position. After you have been bent, you have been compressed, you have been stretched, you have the elastic, um, elastic um, uh, capabilities to recover from any form of adversity 
whether illness, whether depression, whether adversity, or whatever it is, courage takes resilience. And you must be able to be resilient because the devil wants you to give up at every order that he place before you. Like the hodu run or hodu or hodu um, sprint, the umpire knows that the sprinter will occasionally fall or trip down some hodus, so he has given them chances to make mistakes. How much more the author of life? Each and every one of us have been given chances, and believe me, we can never exhaust the chances that God has given out to us. So be resilient in spite of whatever is going on around you before God is ready for you. And number five, courage requires that we take action. Step out of your comfort zone. Take action. Talk is cheap. Action is required for us to, to be able to move into what we need to do. The fear of stepping in the wrong direction is bondage. The fear of stepping in the wrong direction is bondage. So none of us ever make any moves. So we need to start taking a move or start making a move and stepping out. These are the elements that make up courage. And I'm praying that God is opening our eyes already so that we can understand what we are about to get ourselves into. So why do we need courage? Circumstances of life will keep changing. He said, one common factor of life is that change is a common factor of life that each and every one of us will come across. And in spite of changes, we must have the courage to do the right thing. The devil will always present to us substitutes. He will always present to us things that are ungodly. But we must propose in our heart like Daniel did in Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. That he will not defile himself with the king's meal. How often time have we defied ourselves as Christians? Fear of being the outcast has made many people compromise on their faith. How many times have you compromised in your place of work among friends so that you can fit in? But when you have courage in you, you are able to stand for the right thing. In spite of what is going on in the culture, in spite of what they are doing. You see, it will take courage for us to be able to get into our promised land. That's why the first thing that God said to Joshua, he said, be bold, be courageous. Because you might have all the anointing in the world, but if you don't ever have the courage to take the step, the anointing will be useless. And many of us sometimes are asking God for more anointing. We're like a motor car that is parked on one spot. You're pouring more oil into the engine, but you're not driving the car. It will do more damage to the car than good. So it's important that each and every one of us get the anointing, but yet we're using it to do something in our lives, to make something happen in our lives. We will never get the whole picture of things around us. No matter how much we research, no matter how much knowledge we acquire, we will never get the whole picture. So it takes courage to be able to step into the unknown. If all that you depend on is what you see, then your life will be limited to the natural realm. The Bible makes us understand that we walk by faith, not by sight. And then number three is that we should stop depending on other people. Why do we need courage? Many of us are following a bad one God effect. Everywhere we go, we seem to uh, follow what other people are doing. We can't stand by ourselves and do things by ourselves. This has often hampered or hindered our progress because we are looking for every Dick Tom and Harry to hang out with before we make decisions that will affect our destiny. Perhaps what's certainly for me in my life is that I discovered from scriptures that one day I will start to give account of my own life and I will do it as an individual before the Almighty God, not as a group with my family, or my friends, or my loved ones. I want to implore you, therefore, that you must learn to depend on the Spirit of God leading you at all times. That is the way you can be sure that your courage level will increase. As I begin to close, how do I work courageously? 
Number one, I believe that you should get out of your comfort zone. Try something new this year. Do go out on an, on an adventure this year. Visit places that you've never been before. Take yourself out. Get into the mix of things. Many of us are stuck in a routine which has limited our vision, our goal, our aspiration because we simply know our neighbor, we know our postman, we know our manager at work and, that's, and we know the pastor at church and beyond that we know nobody else. So get into the mix of things, go out there, enjoy life, get out of your comfort zone. Number two, practice personal integrity in spite or regardless of public pressure. Many times we are pressured into doing things we are not supposed to. But one with God is a majority. Have a principle living. Have ethics, have character. You see, the people that mock you today, one day will come and bow before you. Number three, pursue God's vision for your life and not man's vision. Many people are running visions, but it's not God's. They're running vision, but it's not even their own personal vision. Make sure that you are pursuing God's vision for your life and not that of man or your manager or somebody else's. Number four, embrace sacrificial action. Courage will require that you pay a sacrifice. So be rest assured that it involves some level of risk and you must be willing to take that risk. But you can mitigate against that risk by doing your research and due diligence up, up front. As I begin to close, the word of the Lord says in the books of Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10, He said, Do not fear, I am with you. Do not be dismayed, I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is for us. I want us to understand this. He is for us and He will never leave us nor forsake us. Fear will only cause us to panic. Panic will make us to make irrational decisions. I've shared this story before, perhaps I should share it again. I went swimming some years ago, many years ago actually. I got to the swimming pool, I swam a few lengths across, back and forth. Then suddenly a thought came to my head, which I thought was a bright idea at that point in time, that I can stand at the deep end. Clearly there's a sign that says 2.7 meters. Now I'm 6 foot 5 in height. So I thought to myself, I could. Now, I treaded the water from the deep end and I began walking and suddenly it just went pew, down into the, into the bottom and I, I began to panic. So I tried to um, raise my head above the water but the ground was too deep. So I, I began sinking, screaming for help. I have forgotten I was the same person who swam a few lengths across back and forth but because I was panicking, I began to scream for help. The man that tried to help me, I was dragging him down. And he pushed me away not to drown him. And I was trying to survive. Because I had forgotten all that I had learned. I had turned into the bean. All, all I had at that point in time was to survive and not drown. Finally, the lifeguard passed me a pole. I pulled him with all my strength and got out of the water. It was only some years later when I began to think about it, or some time later rather, I realized that, hold on a second, you're the one that swam a few lengths across back and forth. Why did you panic? This is something that the devil does in our lives. He makes us panic because we are not courageous to take steps. And once we begin to panic, we make irrational decisions. And I'm praying that God will help us and destroy every spirit of fear in us in the precious name of Jesus Christ. See, there are times in life that God will allow and permit that storms come to our lives because it helps our faith to grow and our courage to develop. And many of us have to step out in courage, trusting God that he will never leave us nor forsake us and he will be true to his word. The books of James chapter 1 verse 2 to 4 say, Consider the all joy when you face trials and temptation because the testing of your faith develops perseverance and perseverance, when it finishes, matures and completes us so that we are not lacking anything. Courage is something that we need to complete the cycle in our lives. God is looking for those who are courageous because he wants to send you on errands into places that might look dangerous to men. But because he's with you, the line of the tribe of Judah, 
surely you will be defended. If you want to express the miracle of walking on water, then you must be courageous enough to get out of the boat. And I'm praying that God in this season will help each and every one of us to get out of the boat and be able to walk on water. Because that's when our names is recorded in the history books. How many people remember the disciples that were in the boat? Nobody does. But if you read the books of Matthew chapter 14, you remember that it was Peter that walked upon water with Jesus. He was the only disciple ever recorded, even though Jesus Christ had 12 of them. So if you want to be outstanding in your generation, if you want to be outstanding in your society, in your community, then you must be courageous. And this requires boldness in spite of the adversity. Act boldly and unseen forces will come to your aid. God bless you. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we give you glory and honor. We thank you very, very much for those far you have helped us. You are faithful, O Lord, and we know that you are with us. And we are not afraid. And I pray, Father, that you destroy the spirit of fear in each and every one of us. To the glory and praise of your holy name. That each and every one of us shall be courageous, shall be strong. And we shall move forward in unity, in your power. To the glory and praise of your holy name. Thank you, Father. May the words that we have heard fall upon the Father ground our hearts. Bring for good fruit to the glory and praise of your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise God.